<laughs> well, Zach fans across the city celebrating through a long lunch hour today as Gonzaga defeated South Dakota State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nadine Woodward. It was a slow start for the Zags, but the game ended in a 20-point win over the Jackrabbits. Our Jack Ferris joins us now with a look at how the Zags got it done. Were you nervous at all, Jack, during this? Not in the slightest, <laughs> Nadine. My faith never wavered. Look at that hand. <laughs> Okay. But the first half, of course, was a lot closer than we expected. Let's get to it. Zags and Shemi Karnowski, the NC2A's all-time wins leader, starting the day off in Salt Lake City. Late first half, this was actually the first Zag lead of the game. Collins was a monster off the bench. 10.6 boards for the freshman. Second half, it'd be all Zags from here. Jordan Matthews left alone in the corner. That would be a mistake. He knocks it down. Matthews led the Zags with 16 points. Moments later, huge sequence for the Zags. Collins with a the block there. Silas Melson leading the break. And then Jonathan Williams politely using two hands. Now, Williams only had six points, but they were the loudest six points in the history of the NC2A tournament. Zags cruise to a 20-point win, 66-46. Although it wasn't enough for the guys in Vegas, it was enough to put them in the second round for the ninth straight year. Keith Oso and Will Shant were courtside for this one. They join us now. Guys, at times it looks like the win was ugly, but I think Coach Few and his staff will take it. Uh, ugly is a good thing in the NCAA tournament because nobody says an ugly loss. They, they say a bad loss. Ugly means you found a way to win the game. You know, this was maybe a little bit closer than people thought, especially at the time. People started to panic a little bit. But this Gonzaga team is a second-half team, found a way to win a game. They've been off for nine days. I don't think there's too much to read into this. The only thing that matters... They didn't lose. Okay? You're not the first one seed to go down to a 16. The game plan was pretty evident for the Jackrabbits from the beginning. They packed the paint. They dared Gonzaga to shoot. They were not going to let Shimon Karnowski and Jonathan Williams beat them. And Gonzaga couldn't make him pay. 31% shooting in the first half. But in the second half, they kept firing, and it turned around. Just fun, you know, just competing at the highest level. Uh, obviously, nothing is given uh, in March. So, as a competitor, this is what you live for. Um, just, you know, really excited and happy that we get to play again on Saturday. Shots weren't falling out there for us, um, but the defense was there for us. So, I mean, it's, it's good to hang our hat on that, you know. But uh, still team, still be playing in March Madness. It's a feeling you can't put in words, like I always say. But uh, I'm glad we're, keep, we're still dancing. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, every win in March is a good win. So, uh, we're happy about the win, and now we're going to see who we're going to play next. A resounding North City. Think about that second half. Gonzaga shot almost 48. Were you them and keep throughout was consistent? Well, the good news is they got their feet wet in the NCAA tournament. Some guys got their feet wet for the first time. Nigel William Scott came up huge. We're going to hear from him about his big day, kind of the star of the show here in Salt Lake City. Plus, we're also going to hear about uh, what it's going to take to win the next game. And these fans from Northwestern, remind you a lot of Zag fans back in 1999. New things, and it's pretty cool here to witness. Hopefully, we're going to dash their dreams come <laughs> Saturday, though. Well, that's coming up tonight at 6. For now, live in Salt Lake City with Will Sherrod, I'm Keith Oso, KXOY Force. All right. Thanks so much, guys.